What's going on guys? Once again, thank you to all the people who bought training and thank you once again to the Nerd Tribe for your well-constructed comments. I've been thinking, what is building wealth? I have literally seen a lot of people talk about building wealth. Uh, one thing is buying stock in the stock market to build wealth or investing in real estate to build wealth. There's this common frame, building wealth, building wealth. But there's no definition of what wealth is. Because I consistently see this. And I went to the dictionary and wealth is having an abundance of something. So if you are in the stock market and you're buying stock, but you don't have an abundance of stock, you're not wealthy. If you're investing in real estate and you don't have an abundance of real estate, you're not wealthy. And if you're from a cash basis, you don't have a lot of money, you're not wealthy. Because I've literally, like I was watching uh, the real estate Robinson. It's this guy and his wife who invest in short-term rentals and they were talking about how they bought a house off market for a good price and then they sold it to another Airbnb investor because they needed money. And this is one of the things, like, I consistently see people who use the term building wealth, having a certain net worth, and I frequently see they don't have any cash. And it's perplexing to me because I'm a child of the 60s, I'm a child of the 70s. Fred Trump wrote a check to Donald Trump for millions of dollars, because he had millions of dollars in the bank, which is something that, let's call it the new wealth mindset doesn't believe in. Um, I really think that a lot of these younger wealth builders do not believe in having cash. What's the term? Cash is trash. <laughs> You consistently see people saying that cash is trash, your money should be invested, your money should be working. And I consistently see these same people having cash flow issues. And once again, I'm from the old school in my mind. When I think of a person who has wealth, I think of a person who has a lot of physical cash in the bank. That is my concept of wealth. Now, legitimately, if you have a house worth 700,000 and you have a stock portfolio worth 300,000, legitimately on paper, you are a millionaire. But let's start talking about form and function. Um, you know, I don't use the term millionaire all the time because I don't really think that helps you. Me having a bunch of money is me. And there seems to be a culture of pocket watchers, people who like to see um, people spend money. I recently just hit the little three dots. So Omni and the Hellcat doesn't pop up in my feed anymore because this latest video is taking delivery of two cars. I'm like, I don't really want to watch someone else take delivery of an expensive car. That does nothing for me. But there seems to be a culture of people who like that content. I don't know, but it's not something that I appreciate or enjoy watching and I'm beginning to see that many many people want to be the spectators 
of people building wealth or having wealth or spending money versus actually going out and getting their own money. That's kind of the way I'm reading the tea leaves. I'm seeing that a lot of people are not truly interested in building durable wealth. And for the sake of this conversation, we're going to say wealth is an abundance of resources and we're going to be a little sharper. We're going to say for you to be wealthy in these United States of America, you have a combination of assets and cash of say 3 million. That's the floor. 3 million and above, you're wealthy. Now, why do I say 3 million and above? Um, first of all, if you're wealthy, in my opinion, once again, just my opinion, your wealth should make your life easier. I don't think I'm going to have any disagreements with any of the comments about that. And what I'm seeing is, uh, there's a guy the generational dividend investor that I find who talks about investing in dividend stocks. And this guy has a portfolio of 2.6, almost $2.7 million. And I assume with his house, he's probably at 3 million. And his dividend portfolio brings him in $90,000 a year in cash flow which is in line with what I'm saying because you need almost a million dollars to get $30,000 worth of dividend income per meal. So 900,000 to get $30,000 per year of dividend income. And to me, this is a person that is wealthy because he has assets and he has cash flow. And this is where I kind of run into a problem with the majority of real estate investors, in my opinion, the majority of real estate investors are nowhere near close to being wealthy. Because here's the thing, going back to the real estate Robinsons, um, they bought this house for 330, they put 80,000 in, they turned around and sold it for 526 realizing a hundred and twenty thousand dollar cash upon cash return okay a hundred and twenty thousand dollars to me is not a lot of money to me and that kind of goes back to this whole thing with real estate because i have a few friends in real estate i have um one person who has 20 houses and she bought these houses at a, you know, her net worth is literally doubled because of the appreciation of real estate. But she bought her houses, um, she would buy trashed houses and renovate them. So she got her houses really, really cheap. And even after buying the house and renovating it, she could get 50 to 60% of the rent proceeds in her pocket. So to me, she is one of the savvier real estate investors because I saw this guy who talked about he had 50 doors and he was making $15,000, $15,000 positive cash return. Um, this girl has 20 houses and she does $23,000. $23,000 because she's recently reset, raised her rent. So she's doing $23,000 on less than half because she actually, on some of these houses she owns outright because she got them that cheap. But what I see consistently in the world of real estate is many of these folks without a good credit score would be dead in the water because they don't have enough to actually do anything. And that to me, because you know, if someone tells me I'm a millionaire based on real estate 
and all of their net worth is locked up in the equity of their houses. Now this is something they can transform to cash if they choose to sell, but once again, we're talking about usability of your wealth. To me, the average real estate investor, and I will define average real estate investor, is a person who will go out, buy a house, get a mortgage on the house, and positively cash flow 150 to 300 bucks per month. That is the average real estate investor. I don't really see any wealth being generated from that type of real estate investing anytime soon. I mean, yeah, once the house is paid off, they have a paid off asset that cash flows, and we're looking at 20 something years, 25 something years. And let's talk about that. All right, I am 55 years old, and I've been an entrepreneur 23 of those years. Um, a 20 year window for something to develop is a long ass time. It's a long, long time. And one of the things I've learned is you want to generate financial influence. And I'm gonna say financial influence because financial influence is different than being wealthy. Early as, early as possible in life because I've been able to enjoy money while I was younger and do things. Just a point that I wanted to make because you can enjoy financial influence and not be wealthy. And this is where I'm about to get into my story and I'm gonna talk about the levels of money. I was homeless. I was living in the boarding house and I just fast forward through some strategies into getting a really good job and entering into a new network. That network made all the difference in my life. And I went from a period of living in a boarding house struggling financially to starting a business about this happened in a period of three years starting a business where I made and to me this is the first level of wealth first level of wealth I made $250,000 in eight months from my first real successful business now I had a job, I didn't quit my job. And I was not a millionaire and I did not have any cash flowing assets at the time. But because of where I was three years prior to what I felt very, very rich. I had a paid off BMW, anything in any store, if I wanted it, I could buy it. I felt very, very rich. And that is what I would call my period of financial influence because I wasn't rich. Well, you know, debatably because that 250,000 adjusted for inflation would be almost 600,000 today. Um, I'm gonna say I was more financially affluent than rich. And I'm gonna explain why I make that distinction because I had to work to make my money. And that's why I was financially influenced. I wasn't rich nor wealthy. And to me, that was the first level of money because I had access, I had ease of life, and I had money in the bank. There was, at that point in my life, there was nothing that I couldn't do that I wanted to do. If I wanted to take a trip, I wanted to go to Spain, I wanted to, you know. Um, after I did all that, me and the girl I was dating, we went to um, London, and then we went to Portugal, and we went to Germany. Two weeks, not a problem, because that trip cost, I think at the time, like $5,000 or $6,000, which didn't even put a dent in my bank account. So to me, that was the first level of money. Once again, to be 100% transparent, I wasn't a millionaire. I didn't have any cash flow and assets, but I did have assets and I had comfort 
in the ease of my life because since that point, my life has been pretty easy, pretty easy. So to me, that was the first level, once again, financial influence. I didn't own any stocks. I didn't own any bonds. I didn't own any um, real estate. Now we will move to the second level of building wealth. Because once again, I've read all the books that you read, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and everything. And when I was in the storage auction business, and this is why I'm gonna say, that's why I don't think the, because at one point, I used to be the average real estate investor. I had two homes, one that I lived in and one that I rented out, and the one I was renting out was cash flowing at about 400 bucks per month. And during my business career, I actually had two houses, and you know, I was like all over the place. I was all over the place and I was investing in the stock market and it came to me one day when I was out on the auction trail. I had bought this killer unit. I only spent like maybe a thousand, but I, I made, I was gonna make like $80,000, killer unit. And it dawned upon me that me being active in business was the most profitable thing I was doing. It was way more profitable than the house. It was way more profitable than stocks. And I was just like, why are you doing those things when this thing you're doing right here makes more money? Literally, I made more money in a week than I did from um, stocks or real estate. I made more money in a week from my business than I did in a year from stocks to real estate. And this is one of the reasons that I have the opinions and positions because once again, wealth is an abundance of a resource and most real estate investors, most stock investors do not have an abundance of real estate, do not have an abundance of stock. So they're not truly building wealth. They're attempting to reach financial affluence, which once again, based upon all the content that I've consumed, they're not even close to that. So what I did is I doubled down on my business. I got real, because I had the real estate when I was on YouTube, I got rid of my last house in like 2011 and um, then I became a renter because renting worked out really well for me. And then what happened that truly made me understand wealth? The year that I sold enough digital products, my book, Making Money A to Z, with self-storage in the auctions, after that year, after paying my taxes, I still had a million dollars cash. And at that point, I think I became wealthy because that wasn't all the money I had in the bank. Remember that $250,000 that I made in my first business? That literally became the seed money for everything that I've done since then. And when I started on YouTube, I had $300,000 in the bank. So financial influence, if you can just get to financial influence, your life is gonna be better, easier, you're gonna have more money, you're gonna do the things you wanna do without being a millionaire, without being an investor. Because the whole point of this is to actually have cash money in the bank. Going back to the real estate Robinsons, going, these people cannot do what they wanna do because they don't have the cash, okay? Now I'm about to speak to this. Uh, I will speak to a business failure when I got in the car room of business. I had the cash to spend $400,000 on 30 cars. I had the cash. I was able to get into the car room of business very, very quickly and because I was able to scale to 30 cars, I had 30 cars that I paid cash for, I bought a Mercedes 
that I financed because it was $50,000 and that was like, cause my goal was to get these cars for about, you know, 10,000 to 12,000 pieces. And um, because I was able to scale so quickly, I saw a lot of the bad stuff of the car rental business. At one point I had 12 wrecked cars, you know, and it was just, just a total nightmare. And once again, if I wanted to invest more money into that business, it could have become more successful. But from a personal level, I didn't like the business. It just, it was just a headache. I had the phone dedicated to car rental business and literally I would dread looking at it in the mornings because every time that phone rung, it was a problem and it was a pain in the butt. But because I had the cash, and I didn't have to go get a loan. I was able to get data points about the car rental business very quickly that led to me making the decision, I'm not doing this anymore. And once again, that is pretty much the first um, business that I failed in since the stuff I did in the military. And you know, some people say it wasn't a failure because if I wanted to make it a success, I could have added more money, hired staff, got a location. But here's another thing. I've been exposed to a way of making money that doesn't require all of that. And I make more money faster, quicker, cleaner than the car rental business. I mean, it was just like, I ain't doing it. So, I consider myself at the second level, well, that's the second level of money. The second level of money. You have enough money to do whatever you want to do. To me, that's the second level of money. Now, many people will feel that they can get it through um, credit, and this is one of the reasons that I am not a big fan of starting stuff on credit. I got this bond, right? This is, this is all my credit cards. I got a bunch of credit cards. And you know, I had a question someone asked like, how do you keep up with the payment dates? And I don't have to keep up with them because all of the cards in that bonder have a zero balance which brings me to another principle of building wealth. Your ability to have resources, because credit is a resource, and I have credit and I have cash. I literally have $150,000 in my personal checking account because I just paid myself a distribution out of my company. And the reason I pay myself the distribution is I'm getting ready to get another Porsche and I'm gonna probably have to add $100,000 cash to that car after I trade in my current Porsche. And I'm pretty much gonna do another distribution December because, you know, let me explain it to you. My company is set up as an S Corp. And part of setting up an S Corp is I have to pay myself salary and then I could take the rest of the money out of the company as a distribution minus paying payroll taxes. So I've learned how to play that game because literally I've just paid myself um, a salary the first three months of the year to satisfy that requirement. And then I just stopped paying myself a salary, which also gets back to another principle of I can manage money extremely well. The money that, uh, well, once again, let's talk about. I had money in the bank, and that's above and beyond this $150,000. Because there's more in there, but I just use that because that's what I paid myself as a distribution. Um, literally last year, I made enough money that I was able to take this money, put it in my checking account to live on. So I don't need a current income salary to live because I manage money very well, which is in another principle of building and developing wealth. 
if you cannot have resources and not utilize those resources, you're never going to get wealthy. I've literally had seven figures in the bank that I had not touched for years. And part of developing and building wealth is having a strategy and knowing how to manage money. I feel that I'm about to enter into, let's say I'm at stage three of money. Stage three is I can get whatever I want. I live how I want. I don't work that hard. I'm not semi-retired. I'm kind of like part-time retired, but my cash flowing asset is my business. And in the next 10 years, my goal is to get myself some assets that cash flow without me doing anything. Uh, I've got my business to the point where I don't really work that hard. I, I just don't. It's kind of a weird schedule, but what I want is something that is more passive because my business is not passive at all. Uh, my business is not a business that I could sell because it needs too much of an input from me. But I feel in the next 10 years, I will be at money level four because I will have, because uh, that was the whole reason for the car rental business. I wanted to have something that actually created cash flow above and beyond what I'm currently doing. And I'm really saddened that it didn't work out because the car rental business at scale is a complete hassle fest. So I'm exploring some other ideals to deploy capital into that can create additional streams of income. Because currently I have my business, which is my primary stream of income. I have affiliate marketing and I have YouTube assets. So I have three streams of income that all kind of work together. But, you know, with building wealth, if you cannot create cash flow, and this is something that I see in the real estate in the stock, the stocks other than dividend stocks do not create cash flow. What you have to do is build a portfolio and sell 4% a year. 4%. So you must eat off of your investments. And once again, this is why I like a business because when I bought my Porsche and BMW, I spent $200,000 in one month. Next month, I had that $200,000 back. So this is why I like a business versus non-cash flowing investments. And I'm going to say if you are a real estate investor and you've got three, four, five homes and your mortgages on these homes take up the bulk of your income, of your real estate income, I don't really think that you're going to reach a significant level of wealth on paper. Let's say you have four houses, you bought them at 150,000 and now they're worth 300,000. So now you have $600,000 net worth, even though you absolutely have no cash in the bank. And every time you want to make a move, you got to sell something. To me, I'm going to come up, I'll come up with a term that is an asset based millionaire that without cash flow. And I feel that that is the majority of millionaires. I feel that is why you see on YouTube people who claim I'm a millionaire, but they're financing cars is because they're an asset based millionaire with no cash flow. And I'm going to say something going back to when I started that first business and I had that $250,000 in eight months. That position, I would rather be in that position than to be an asset-based millionaire. Going back to the real estate Robinsons where I cannot make a move without having to sell something. Because every time you sell something, 
your net worth takes a hit. See, that's why I'm not a big fan of that. Now, you know, better to do that than to do nothing at all. I'm not going to argue and say it's not worth doing, but just looking at actually building usable wealth. Going back to Fred Trump. Fred Trump had an enterprise that allowed him to have millions and millions of dollars in the bank. And this new group of wealth builders don't have those type of financial devices. They just don't. Because I consistently see people who will beat their chest and say I'm a millionaire have to finance a Toyota. Once again, once again, in my opinion, if you're making six figures and you're not a millionaire, you have no business financing cars. That's just my opinion. But that comes back to money management. Um, so what I'm seeing here is a lot of conversations about building wealth without really diving deep into the mechanism of building wealth. And for me, and this is just my opinion, the best way to build wealth is to have a cash flowing asset that creates enough cash flow for you to live your life the way that you want to. Because this is one of my big issues with the fire movement. I see a lot of these people living a few steps above poverty because they have fixed assets and let's see, they're, they're getting $40,000 a year and they don't have to work. I saw this one couple, they bought a house in the middle of the desert. The guy was monitored and electricity, you know, all because he didn't want to work. And I'm just sitting there like, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to have to monitor my spin where I've got to be worried about how much electricity that I use. Because once again, I've developed some appetites. There's that word, appetite. Um, I don't know what the price of gas is from a conscious level. Whenever I need gas, I pull up to the gas point, pump, put my credit card in, fill up and keep it moving. Because I'm not concerned about gas. I'm not concerned about utilities. I'm not concerned about the price of food because I have reached a level of wealth where those things just don't impact me. Don't impact me. Uh, I currently live in a high rise and people are literally running out of this building like it's on fire because uh, when they renewed my lease, my rent went up 300 bucks per month, which I fully expected. And um, I just went ahead because, you know, that was no biggie to me. But a lot of people, literally, everyone on my floor has moved except the girl next door. And I don't know if this other girl is still here because I haven't seen her. Uh, it's not like people's like, hey, goodbye, I'm moving out. They just move and you never see them again. And once again, I'm not impacted by rent increases and gas prices and inflation hasn't, I have not personally felt inflation. I've not felt it. It's not impacted me. It hasn't made me alter how I use my money. I have no clue to, honestly, inflation for, for other people. I know that may sound somewhat, um, dismissive or insensitive but to me inflation is for other people because I've reached I would say money level three in the next 10 years my goal is to reach money level four and money level four is where I have once again I'm defining this assets that make me five hundred thousand dollars a year that I really don't have to do anything that's my goal that's my target and I feel that that's something I can do because right now I have a very interesting situation because um, the way I run my business currently, and this is something that started in 2020. If you didn't know, I don't really work the full year. I don't have to. So part of building wealth that I see left out the conversation is having freedom on the level that you want to have freedom. 
Now, van life is the antithesis of building wealth. What people are doing are dumbing down their life to their means versus increasing their means and resources to live the life that they want. Every time I see van life, I think this is a advertisement for poverty, a few steps above poverty. Because I've watched the van life videos and all the stuff you have to do to live in the van. It's work living in a van. You've got a gray water tank, dark water tank, food, shopping. Uh, just, it's a lot of hassles to live in the van. And there's a group of people who choose to live in the van, who make enough money if they want to live in a house or an apartment, they could. I feel that it's a small percentage of van lifers. I think the vast majority of van lifers are living in the van because of the economics. And I feel it's just gonna grow. It's just gonna grow because we're moving as a country from aspiring to be the best that you can be to be less than average. Less than average. What was that saying? You will own nothing and you will be happy. Uh, I'm seeing that all over the place. I'm seeing it all over the place because um, one of the things that gets me with all of these building wealth YouTube channels is the number of people who are putting out this content who have no wealth whatsoever. Now, once again, I've talked about this before. If you can hit the algorithm right, you can get wealthy. Graham Stephan is proof positive of that. Meet Kevin is proof positive of that. You get really successful YouTube channel, Instagram page, or TikTok page. You indeed can become wealthy. But what I'm seeing is a lot of people faking the funk. And I'm seeing a lot of people who now have money who two, three years ago didn't have money because of their YouTube channel. And I'm not hating because you know, I have a YouTube channel, you know? The goal is to get videos, to get a lot of views, to make a lot of money, that's the goal. I'm not hating on that. I'm just stating that we're living in a world where people are not putting out the true mechanisms for building wealth. And for me, once again, there's a, common phrase that most millionaires are built through real estate uh, I'm gonna disagree with that I think that because if you will look at all the billionaires and if you go through the 2700 billionaires around the world they all have businesses and I would think on the millionaire class you will get to the millionaire class you will see the same thing over again and because these billionaires and millionaires are buying real estate it looks like real estate is the reason for wealth. Because someone asked me this interesting question on B-School for Hustlers. Do business owners make more money than real estate investors? Like real estate investors are a special class of real estate investors. As I said in this video, I think the average real estate investor is close to broke. And if their credit gets screwed up, they're dead in the water. Because they will not be able to buy any more real estate. They will not be able to get money for rehabs and once again I have people that I know in real estate who make a lot of money because they're sophisticated they're savvy and they got their properties way under market way under market my one friend who has real estate is not buying any more stuff she says it's just too expensive she says it's just too expensive for me to meet my financial goals I'm just gonna wait it out because she will not buy a deal that's not a deal. If it's not a deal, she ain't buying it. And this, what I think separates her from the average real estate investor because she is a business owner that invests in real estate. That's the deal, that's the big differential because like, you know, I, I was there, two houses, lived in one, rented out one, was only making like an extra 350, almost 400 bucks a month. I was just like, it was just painfully slow, painfully slow. So, I, I, what I what I do see coming, in, you know, in this current real estate market, is there's going to be a ton of deals in 2023, and 2024, and 2025. However, I also feel that a lot of people are trying to get wealthy 
in the laziest way possible. And this is where social media really, really gets a lot of people. There are people out there who are convinced that they can get wealthy, they can make a lot of money, and they don't have to work. They're convinced, I'm gonna buy some crypto. And you know, once again, if people say I hate on crypto. I don't hate on crypto itself. I do believe there will be a government-backed crypto in the future, and it will be the overall currency 30, 40 years in the world in the future. I hate the fact that average people have this belief process that they can become millionaires by buying this token and holding on to it and doing absolutely nothing. During this, because there are many people who agree with me that the market's gonna be down for the next 10 years. And we're gonna see who's a sophisticated, savvy technician on making money versus someone who got lucky. I feel the vast people in the crypto, they were not smart, they were not savvy, they just got lucky. They bought the right coin at the right time and proof positive, how many of them have been able to repeat those gains? Literally, I had people in the comments like, oh, I did this, I did this, you did that one time. How many more times can you do it? I don't get a response. I don't get a response. And also, you know, with trading, like I haven't even started paper trading because one of the things is, I am not going to devote a whole bunch of time to trading because from what I see, what I see, running a business is easier than trading. Because what I'm seeing is it consistently takes people five to six years to learn how to trade. And I'm gonna whittle that down to about two because another thing that happens is once they hit some bad trades, they just stop trading. So if you really factored in the time that they were actually trading, if they told you it took them five years to trade, go ahead and will it down to two, two and a half, because more than likely they just stopped trading when they ran into a bad um, trend. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because there are so many people who will have you think that you can make all of this money in trading with no money. Uh, I have a firm understanding of how trading works. And I'm gonna give you this example. Let's say you bought some stock options and you had 5,000 of your money at risk and the stock options went well. They did really, really well. And let's say you made $30,000, okay? So that's at 5,000. So you had a 6X return on your money, all right? So let's say you had $100,000 with a 6X return on your money. That's 600,000. See, this is what the big boys in trading have. They're not in the markets with five or 10,000. They're in the markets with hundreds of thousands, if not millions. And let's go ahead and say that same trade. If you had a million in that options trade, and you six at your return, you would make six million. And this is one of the things, there are people who are skilled at options trading, but they don't have enough capital to make the trades they wanna make. Very interesting. So that's something that I've really seen quickly because there's a lot of people who are skilled at trades, they know how to evaluate the market, they know how to put in their puts and calls, and they've got really good strategy but they just don't have enough money. They just don't have enough money. So that's another limitation. Going back to my thesis that starting a cash flowing business that provides cash flow, income, and money is better than real estate investing, is better than trading, because if you start that cash flowing business first, guess what, it gives you more money to get into real estate. It gives you more money to get into trading. It gives you more money to get into crypto. And once again, you can go ahead in the comments, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I started with 2,000, I made 100,000. I would say you're lying. 
you don't have enough capital at play in the markets to make that kind of money. But if you did, once again, that's just that whole thing. Like I've seen it because like I said, uh, I'm going to spend some time paper trading starting next month and I'm probably gonna start live trading because I finally got my account open. And there was someone who's like, trading is easier. And I was like, I asked him a simple question. How much money have you made in the market? No response. So like, here's the thing. You can learn how to trade and you can make an extra 30, maybe $40,000 a year. Or you can start a small business and really hit it hard and make 100,000. 100,000 versus 30,000. Know, choice is yours. All right, so uh, we're getting ready to get into some esoteric stuff, some deeper level of trading, not trading, training. And if you buy the program, which will be in the first comment, you can get this new training because we're gonna really, because like I'm, I'm slowly coming out my break, I'm slowly coming out my break, putting out more content. But yeah, go ahead and get that and you can get this new training. Just go ahead and get the program. I haven't really put all the stuff up together yet, but I will do so very soon.